Today I'm going to show you how I make my scallop bunting. I made this one and hung it on the curtain rod in my sewing room above my design wall. Okay, let's get started. First off, let's talk about the fabric. For each scallop, you'll need two five inch squares. Of course, you can cut from fabric from your stash or you can use pre-cuts. I'm making another one just like the one that I already made. I'm using four colors and I'm using six prints from each colorway. And from each print, I cut two five inch squares for a total of 48. That means I'll get a total of 24 scallops and the bunting measures about 96 inches long. To mark the bottom of my scallops, I use my four inch circle ruler. You can get my four inch ruler individually or in a set, which includes three other circle rulers in three different sizes. Now you could do another size circle if you wanted. You just need to cut your squares one inch bigger than the circle. I mark on the wrong side of one of the squares. I only trace the bottom half of the circle. You can see the center line on my circle ruler. I just mark the bottom. Then I pair it up with this matching square right sides together. I like to use a mechanical pencil with a nice thin line you can use whatever you want to use as long as you can see your line because it will be your stitching line. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and mark all of my stitching lines. Now they're all marked, so let's talk about the strip of fabric that holds all of the bunting pieces together. You could use a package of double folded quarter inch bias tape if you wanted to. You can pick it up from the store, but I am going to make my own. I cut a strip of fabric about one and eighth inches wide and I ran it through a three quarter inch bias tape maker. This is the three quarter inch one. This is what it looks like. It's red and it's by Clover. I decided to use one of my wide back fabrics because it's 108 inches wide and I thought that would work out perfectly for this length of bunting. So again, I cut it about one and an eighth inches wide across the whole width of the fabric. Let me show you how I run it through the bias tape maker. I know it's called bias tape maker and this is not cut on the bias because we don't need it to curve, it's going to go straight. The first thing I do is cut a real pointy point on one end of the strip. Next, I take my spray bottle and I spray my entire strip. I don't really saturate it. I just like to get it wet. And in my spray bottle, I have water with a little bit of starch. Then I iron just the end of the fabric so that it's dry. Because it's dry, that makes it easier to insert into the bias tape maker until the point comes out. I pull the pointed end out enough so that I can start ironing and I just place my iron next to the strip and start pulling it through. I keep my iron a little bit away from the bias tape maker because I don't want to burn my fingers and I just try to keep the fabric feeding through evenly as I go along. Okay, normally I would just continue going and doing the whole strip, but at this point I want to show you what I do when it's all completed. What I do is I just fold it exactly in half and iron it again. And that's how I prepare my fabric strip for the top. And next I'm gonna show you how I sew the bunting pieces. Here I am at my cute little featherweight. I'm gonna show you how I put these two together. I just start with right sides together. You can stick a pin in there if you'd like or you don't have to pin at all. And I'm going to be using a half inch seam allowance. I'm using my Seam Sew Easy guide for that or you could mark one on your machine. 
use a piece of washi tape, or even if you didn't want to do that, you could just mark it right onto the fabric if you wanted and just grab a ruler and mark in a half inch from the edge and just mark a quick line. This is just for the sides. Our scallop bottoms are already marked. So just using a seam allowance on the machine is pretty easy. Again, I'm just gonna start sewing on the side, a half inch seam allowance, and I'm going to back stitch where I stop and I start on each edge. I'm just gonna continue sewing till I get to that marked half circle and I'm just gonna stitch right on that line. And I really like an open-toed foot for this. I really like the feather weight and when I use my Bernina, I use an open-toed foot as well because I like to see where my needle is actually going into my fabric. So again, back stitch at the beginning and at the end. Now I'm just gonna continue on sewing these buntings. There's no need to clip my thread in between. I just keep sewing. Okay, last one finished. And now to trim them up. I just grab my scissors and trim an approximate quarter inch seam allowance. It doesn't have to be exact. I just trim a quarter inch past my stitching. After they're trimmed, I just go ahead and turn them right side out, kind of shape them a little bit. I can use my clover turning tool if I want to, if I feel like I need to push some of the curves out, and I just want to give them a quick press. Okay, so now through the magic of editing, I only have these four scallops left to add, so I'm gonna show you how I sew them into the bunting strip. I leave about a seven or eight inch strip before I start adding the first bunting, just so that I have enough on one end to tie. I simply open up the bias strip and I lay the top of the bunting piece in there and I just butt them up right next to each other. Not overlapping, but just right next to each other. And I do back stitch when I stop and start, or basically, I, I guess I should say in between both scallops right there, just to reinforce it a little bit. I want these to last. I wanna hang them on my patio and you never know if it's going to be windy or something so I want to make sure that they last. And that's pretty much all there is to it. It's really fun, super easy. I just continue sewing the edge of the strip, kind of turn under the raw edges and sew that down. And all that's left for you to do is enjoy your bunting.
Thanks so much for joining me today and I'll chat with you next time.